So this is a short video just uh, showing the importance of tracking your units as you manipulate units through uh, a calculation you might do in physics. Any type of calculation that involves units, you should always include the units with each of your numbers. It's very important. It's not only uh, important because it speaks to what you're working with, but it also is a nice tool to interpret and think about whether your finished answer is appropriate. Um, as a simple example, if somebody were to uh, go ahead and to perform a calculation where the velocity of an object is uh, the distance traveled divided by the time that it takes to travel. And they knew that the distance was going to be 5 meters and that the time was going to be 15 seconds. It's not all that uncommon for somebody who is taking shortcuts, going too fast, not thinking about what they're doing to take a look at the values that are provided and immediately go, well, I'm going to go velocity is 15 divided by 5, which is equal to 3, and just assume that since velocity is measured in meters per second, they go back and they write something like this, which is not right. Um, if you tracked what was going on, you see that there was a mistake when they filled these in. So the, uh, the prescribed method is to just go ahead and be very careful and say the velocity is equal to the distance over the time go up and find out, oh, the time is 15 seconds and the distance is 5 meters. So we go back and we rewrite it, 5 meters, being sure to incorporate the appropriate unit divided by the 15 seconds. And now they pull out their calculator to do the numeric value, which is 0.33, I guess. And then they look carefully at the units and they see that the units are meters per second. And now we have appropriate work. It's no different than if somebody were to uh, ask for a distance and somebody to answer eight seconds. So what we're saying is the eight might be accurate. It seems like it might be a measurement of distance, but if we give the wrong units, it's obvious that something's going wrong with the process. So what we have to do is be careful not only with our numeric values, but the units themselves. So let me give us a new page to work from, and we'll do a little bit of practice right here. So anyways, what we want to do with this worksheet, with this set of notes, is not worry so much about the numbers that are involved, but more practice with how do we multiply, divide, take the square root, add or subtract units, so that those skills are something that is just a given. And then you just have to practice making sure that you know that you should put those units in each time you do a math manipulation. So I just want to go ahead and do a couple with you. Um, if you uh, have available the uh, notes that go along with this, each of these problems will be listed there. And then you can just go ahead and, uh, as I work, hit pause each time you see one, work it out yourself and see what you're coming up with. So my first sample would be something that, you know, much like before, a distance is velocity divided by time. So I'm going to give a velocity unit, which is meters per second. And we would multiply it by a time unit, which is second. So right here, I can go ahead and show, make sure that if you are being consistent and thorough, what you really should do is go ahead and make that a meters per second and then multiply it by. And since this is a fraction, make your second unit a fraction, which would be seconds over one. Now you can just multiply across. These seconds cancel out first, and you end up with a finished unit of meters over one, or simply meters. And in this particular case, we go back, and since that's a measurement of distance, the appropriate unit for distance would be meters, so you're confident that, at least in your multiplication process, you should have each of the pieces correct. So there's the first one. Let's go ahead back, and we'll do a second one here. What happens if we have meters per second squared, and we want to divide it by a unit that has, or a value that has meters per second. All right, so this one's a little bit more complicated. Um, when you have two fractions like this, this is really essentially the same thing if it's meters per second squared divided by meters per second, and that's in physics how you would see it more often because of the way that the formula first set it up. So we have a compound or a complex fraction we're dividing, so the technique is to take the numerator value, meters per second squared, and instead of trying to divide it by a fractional form, what you do is you multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator. So meters per second, do the reciprocal, seconds over meters, go back and look carefully. Looks like this meter and this meter can cancel out. 
It looks like this seconds could cancel out with one of those, which leaves a one up there because it's a placekeeper, and we end up with one over seconds. Not a really common unit for physics, but it does illustrate how mathematically you can manipulate units. It does actually have a pertinent unit, but early in the year we won't be dealing with that. For now, it's just appropriate that you did the math correctly with that. Let's give ourselves a little bit more space. We'll practice a couple more. We'll go with a little bit simpler one. How about a meters per second? And we're gonna divide it by seconds. And we can just go ahead and figure out how that works. So once again, meters per second divided by seconds. If it's me, I go like this. I divide it by seconds. I'm gonna switch colors just so you can see my math work. I'm gonna take the seconds and I'm gonna give it a, a fractional version. So I'm gonna put it like that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and we have our complex fraction. So that's the same thing as meters per second. And we're gonna multiply it by the reciprocal, one over seconds. Nothing can cancel out. So we have meters over seconds times seconds, seconds squared as a finished unit. So there's that one. And let's see if I have one more in our series. So how about if one were to simply take and do a kilogram multiplied by a meter divided by a second squared, and we want to multiply that by a meter. Pretty simple one, these multiplications, as long as you get the x's and don't get those confused. We like to have all of our values. If one of them's in a fraction, make the others in a fraction. So you put that over one. Now you come across, can anything cancel out? It doesn't look like it. So this time I have the kilograms, and I can multiply by meters times meters, which would be meters squared, divided by our second squared times one, which is second squared. And you don't have to show the multiplication in there. Kilograms meter squared over second squared is formal. A lot of times we don't put that um, multiplication symbol in there. So I hope that helps out. And what we'll do is go ahead and uh, make sure that these are uploaded for you and practice those. And then there'll be a worksheet that goes along with this afterwards so you can do a little bit of guided practice.